This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not that popular. It's been quite a while since last time I made a video, and with Origami King coming out, I thought now was the perfect time to finally make a new video. And now, for those of you uninitiated, Origami King is the sequel to Color Splash, which came out in... <laughs> ah yes, the Wii U. The console I bought just so I could play Color Splash. I don't regret that purchase decision at all. Origami King is kind of a weird game for me. It just kind of came out of nowhere. I was sitting around one day, and then all of a sudden the reveal trailer dropped. And it was like, oh, cool. And then I watched the trailer and saw that it was coming out in two months, and it was like, oh, cool. And that's weird, because Paper Mario is one of my favorite franchises. When a new game comes out, it should be like, oh my god, it's a new Paper Mario game. But when I watched it, it was just like, oh, cool. And that's the easiest way I can synopsis my whole thoughts about the game. It's just, oh, cool, it's a new Paper Mario game. But let's just get all that out of the way, and let's talk about Origami King. The game starts off with Mario and Luigi heading to Peach's Castle for the Origami Festival that's going on, and sees that the town is seemingly abandoned. They drive up to the castle and decide to head inside. Don't play my emotions like that. They get inside and see that Peach and everyone has become origami thanks to the origami king, King Ollie. On the way, Mario finds Olivia, they escape, Mario helps Olivia out of the ground. What are you doing, step bro? And from there, the two set off on their adventure to stop King Ollie from taking over the world. King Ollie is a pretty cool villain when you realize that the last two games as villains have been Bowser as a sticker and Bowser going through a phase. It's nice to see an original villain after 13 years. Yeah, Count Black was the last villain before this, and that's insane to think about. Another thing this game does really well is the world. No more does Mario go through the world map to pick where he goes. Instead, he actually travels through the world and this just does so much to help the world feel alive. How does he get up to that mountain area up there? He takes a gondola lift up there. It's small honestly, but a world map just never did it for me. Even back in Color Splash, it felt like the game didn't like the world map system it had. And thankfully, thing items are no longer needed to help Mario make progress. In Color Splash and SS, they just served to pointlessly make the player backtrack. And thanks for ruining my point. I also had a lot of fun with the confetti thing and filling in holes. I don't know what it is about it, but it just feels a lot funner than the paint mechanic that was in Color Splash. Again, you want to know the last time Mario actually explored a world instead of points on a map? 13 years ago. Are you beginning to sense a pattern? Badges are back, items too. Stickers and cards are completely gone, and Mario can never run out of jump or hammer now. There's this toad type of easter egg hunting that I really enjoy doing, where you find toads rolled up in origami that join the audience during battles, and I found it weirdly fun. There's even partners, just kind of. And would you believe me if I said this game was a musical? Origami King has brought back so many staples of Paper Mario that haven't been seen in a very long time. And that's what makes this game so exciting to play for the first time through. They even brought back the small dialogue boxes. Will intelligent systems realize the errors of their way? Will they bring back the excellent combat, gameplay, and characters and story that we've seen all the way back in the Thousand Year Door? Well, yes, and also no. Let me begin my explanation of one character known simply as Bobby. On Mario and Olivia's ride up the gondola lift, they run into a bomb bomb whose name is just bomb bomb, but Olivia calls him Bobby. After chatting for a bit, Olivia says that he should join with them. I sure hope this isn't any tragedy. I'm a fire in my laser. Oh my god! Yeah, that's that's the first on-screen death in a Paper Mario game. Bobby just fing dies. And this sends Olivia into a despair for like five minutes. And then Bobby is never brought up again. Wait, what? I'm not saying I wanted an hour long eulogy for Bobby, but the fact that this is never brought up again is just baffling to me because Bobby's character arc and sacrifice is the strongest narrative element in Origami King. 
Like, you feel really bad for Olivia, and Mario putting on the Goomba mask, knowing it'll cheer her up, is actually pretty sad. I think this moment perfectly fits what Origami King's main problem is, its refusal to fully commit to anything. Yes, a lot of what I wanted is back here, but it's done half-assed. The graphics are amazing, the music is great, not as great as Color Splashes, I mean, the game doesn't have Ruddy Road, so it didn't really stand a chance. However, Origami King's soundtrack is still good with some absolute bangers. But what does this all amount to when the game just feels half-cooked? Badges are backed, but they're more so overpowered upgrades that Mario can get. There's no strategy, there's just, oh, gold is better than silver, so I'll equip this one instead. Mario can get better versions of his hammers and boots, but they're limited use items. While they can be easily bought thanks to the abundance of coins battles give, they should have been expanded into special abilities like FP like the Thousand Year Door did. And because of the way combat is designed, all boots and hammers do the exact same thing just of higher damage numbers. The only unique item in this game is the Hurl Hammer, which is thrown down a line. There's no jump that lets Mario single out a single enemy or anything like that. Partners return, but they're only in like half the game, and they're so useless during battles. Bobby is so bad because half the time he doesn't even attack. They don't even jump at the right time or Mario jumps, so what's even the point to make them jump when it looks so stupid because they get caught on the wall and make it look so fucking stupid? Okay, let's calm down. Let's talk about the battle system. I think fights are actually worth it now. They give you a buttload of coins that Mario can go use to buy badges and items to make the fights easier. They still don't give Mario XP though, and instead Mario levels up through the heart containers that increases HP and power. So while for me the battles were worth it because I like buying really expensive badges and collectibles, if you don't, then the battles are still worthless because boss battles give you enough coins to last a while for items. Intelligent Systems, let me give you a little life hack. If you want combat to be worth it, regardless of the system in place, just tie it to an XP system so Mario can get stronger. It's common sense! The combat in Origami King is definitely unique. The enemies all circle up around Mario and he has to position the enemies so that they line up so he gets a damage boost to wipe them out in one go. This makes every combat encounter a puzzle that has to be solved, and while some are easy, some are evil and only become harder because there's a timer. I get why the timer is there, so I'm not spending forever trying to figure out how to get the enemies lined up, but isn't it kind of weird to put a countdown in a turn-based game? When Mario is fighting a boss, it's the opposite. Mario starts outside and uses the board to run around the boss to attack it. Other than the puzzle element, that's the most exciting part of the game. The rest is jump and smash, which is really easy in this game. Killing enemies has never been this easy before. Solve the puzzle and all the enemies are killable in one attack. Strategy just isn't there anymore. The only enemies that you have to worry about are the spiked enemies, but the easy to access iron boots squashes that issue. In past games, enemies like Koopas had a high defense and a hammer didn't do much, so they had to be hopped on to knock them over, which exposed them to a hammer for high damage. In Origami King, unless they float, the hammer will kill them in one hit regardless. Combat in Thousand Year Door was like building blocks. You have a hole in the square, bam, fill it in with the right shape. Simple. Combat in Origami King is like a Rubik's Cube. It's longer, too complicated, and I spend an hour just trying to get blue to match. Not all the fights in the game are done through the battle system, though. Quite a few boss fights are done outside of it and have Mario hammering vital points of their body. It's cool, yeah, but wouldn't it have been funner to fight these bosses in the actual combat? The absolute worst boss, though, is the last one. It's a short fight, and then the rest might as well be a quick time event, because it's not very engaging. Over the course of the game, I just didn't find myself getting invested in the characters. There were some that I liked, though, I'll get them out. Bowser, of course, was great. Bowser Jr. too. Oddly enough, this game expands on the relationship a good bit, and I think Kamek was my absolute favorite overall. His character is just so great in this game, and after the last two games of him being a rather blank slate, he shows a lot of personality here. Olivia is funny and witty, but then again so is Huey. Huey could have been gender swapped and probably would have acted the same as Olivia. Like, is she actually a good character, or does she just have the most screen time? I do like her, and I kinda hate myself for complaining about her, but nothing interesting happens with her because her character never changes from the events that happen. Bobby dies, and yeah, she's sad for a little bit, but afterwards, that doesn't change a thing about her. Her relationship with King Ollie never gets enough attention either. The King is only in a handful of scenes until the final level, so he doesn't get much development. This could have been a tippy-bluck type of thing, where the relationship is the focal point of the story, but 
That just doesn't happen. About the Toad situation, yes, there are a lot of characters that are still Toads. They're relegated to a collectathon for most of the game, so other creatures have to carry the weight, so Koopas, Shy Guys, and many others can be talked to. There's even a town filled with Sniffets, so progress is being made from the Toad army. Spoiler alert though, the most unique Toad in the game is just one that looks down with a smirk the entire time. Is Origami King better than Color Splash? Yes. Is it better than SS? Is that a serious question? I can give credit to Intelligent Systems, and that's that Origami King is a massive step in the right direction. And I can say that I did overall like the game. It's a funny game with cool set pieces. And while the story may have never gotten to the heights I would have hoped for, it has more depth than SS and Color Splash combined. So if you enjoyed Color Splash, then you will like this game a lot more, I'd reckon. Also, Bowser finally got more than final boss dialogue, so we get quite a good dose of Bowser humor, which, yeah, yeah, I stuck that good shit in my veins, yeah. But just because I say I liked it overall, doesn't mean I'm not massively disappointed in it. Paper Mario is still just making baby steps to its past glory. Baby steps to a game that was released 16 years ago that had more features and personality than this game does in spades. If the next Paper Mario wants to be taken seriously at all, it needs to have a strong combat system that was present in Paper Mario. Mario 64 and a thousand year door. Partners need to be controllable and have an actual effect in battles. Mario needs to earn XP through fights and he needs to have powers other than the basic jump and hammer attack. These aren't what's or buts, but these are actual things the series needs to be great again. I've replayed thousand year door at least four times in my life. That's because the core gameplay is just so much fun. I haven't seen the gameplay of Color Splash in the four years since I last played it. I'm pretty positive the same will be true of Origami King. There have been rumors in the past about why Paper Mario went down the slippery slope starting with SS, but I treated them as that, rumors. Recently though, we've heard from Nintendo themselves about why these modern games are the way they are. With SS, Nintendo said to Intelligent Systems, why does an RPG game need a story and interesting characters? To which, Intelligent Systems, a veteran studio when it comes to making RPG games, looked at them and thought they were joking until they dumped a garbage full of stickers on their desk and told them to figure it out. To this day, they still have that noose around their neck. It's loosened for sure, as Nintendo has allowed them to insert two whole original characters in this game up from one from previous games. I mean, you got the Voli Mentals there as well, but other than that, the mandate that Nintendo told Intelligent Systems back in 2011, if I had to guess, is still going strong. And you can really feel Intelligent System edging against that noose, stretching it as much as they can with this game because they want to make original characters, I'm sure. I mean, Jesus Christ. Half the bosses of this game are office supplies. One of which is a goddamn stapler. Origami King was Intelligent Systems' big chance to bring back the Paper Mario that I love. But instead, as I said, it's just baby steps. Just like how Color Splash was baby steps coming off of SS, am I really gonna wait another four years just so I can make another review and at the end say, yeah, this game was better than Origami King, but it's just baby steps? I don't think so. I've given up hope for a Thousand Year Door style of the game. That was one of my most anticipated games I was looking forward to, but I know if things continue as they do, it'll never happen. However, there is another. A game that could easily be as good as A Thousand Year Door, and its name is Bug Fables. This indie game is everything Origami King should have been. It shows that the old Paper Mario formula is still good, and it works. Maybe this indie game will inspire Nintendo enough to allow intelligent systems to make the game that I've been asking for years now. Or maybe they should just lay down this old franchise to rest.